to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. Today's show is sponsored by Jaypore Living. This is the second sponsored show by Jaypore Living. In the first show, episode 526, we met Jaypore CEO, Asha Chaudhary. And today her brother, Nitesh Chaudhary, joins me. Nitesh is the Director of Innovation, Supply Chain, and Technology. If you heard that first show, then you already know the powerful story of their family and the origin story of Jaypore Living. Jaypore is not your average hand-woven rug company. No, ma'am. <laughs> no, sir. They have a long-standing commitment to empowering their artisans, ensuring ethical and fair practices, as well as sustainability. And learning the backstory of their family and the company is inspiring. I highly encourage you to listen to that episode after this one. It's episode 526. The links will be in the notes. All right. Now, Natasha is here today to tell us about Jaypore's latest initiative. It is a program called Manchaha. This is a word in Hindi meaning from the heart. I'm thrilled to share this initiative and the incredible opportunities it is bringing to so many people, not to mention the beautiful one-of-a-kind rugs that it is bringing to you so that you can specify them for your design projects. Help me in welcoming Natesh. Hi, Nitesh. Thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Hi, hey, Luan. So, Nitesh, I'm so happy to have you join me today because your sister, Asha, impressed the socks off of me. And that is about the weirdest mm. sentence you could ever hear. And I just dated myself. <laughs> um, but she truly did. Um, back in episode number 526, Asha joined us for another sponsored show where she told us the backstory of your family, your father, your mother, moving from one place in India to another, the values and the mission of Jaipur and about the artisans. And I have to tell you, I I just was so taken, not only with Asha, but with Jaipur and your company and the way you run it. So to have you here today, Nitesh, to continue this and to continue to learn more about Jaipur is very exciting for me personally, because I really do truly respect the way your family conducts yourself in your business. It's so really cool. So today we're going to talk about a little bit more about your company and what you do, but also a new initiative that you have, which is called Manchaha. Do you want to start by telling us a little bit about the Manchaha program that you introduced and, and get us going in that direction, Nitesh? Yeah, certainly. So um, Manchaha uh, it's an Hindi word, um, which means from the heart. And the Manchaha rugs are one of a kind rugs. And these are made differently from our regular program rugs. Um, and with our program r- rugs, the way it works is we make the design um, and then we print it on a paper, which is given to the weavers with the yarns and they weave it into a rug. And with the with the program rugs, we always have certain surplus raw materials remaining, and we don't use these materials back for the program rugs just to avoid color variation. And given the scale of our production and the size of our operations, um, you know the surplus materials can be in thousands of pounds every month. So. Mm. So while we were uh, looking into, okay, what solution we could do with the surplus materials um, 
at the same time we realized that our viewers have their own creative side which we never looked into and what we did was we gave them the surplus yarns and asked them to make anything from their heart and what mm. came from this experiment was just truly magical um the weavers started to weave the life stories into the designs of these rugs it gave them a way to express and communicate their emotions inspirations memories other life events and you know things that influence them around and the impact it had in their life was just truly remarkable and they also realized that they just no longer just a weaver but they are also an artist i i i have to say i just <laughs> It's, it is remarkable when you think about, so what you're, you're describing to us, Nitesh, is that in your regular rug program, you, whoever the you is in your company, you have designers that design a rug. They design the pattern and mm -hmm. you supply your artisans and your weavers with these patterns and they make them. And that's terrific. Mm -hmm. And that's a skill and that's amazing. And I, neither of us could probably do it. Right. Mm -hmm. But that yeah. there was thousands of pounds left over of basically the yarn, the product that they used to make the rugs. And previously, this yarn was going unused. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so now you take this and you give it back to the weavers and you say, design what you want from your heart, manchaha. Yeah. Yeah. It's so remarkable. And, and you know, who, who was it your vision? Like whose vision was this to kind of try this program? Certainly. So it was my sister, Kavi, and she is actually the designer in our family. And um, mm -hmm. she and she's very well known um, around the world in for her designs that she does. And she was the one who uh, pioneered the program um, and got into this and and she was the one who actually realized that, you know, the artisans have such a amazing creative side and they need to be given the opportunity to, you know, to express their creativity. And, and she's the one who actually uh, is a, you know, she runs the program and it's a big part of, you know, the success of this program. Mm. And do you recall if, any of you, like what I heard in your voice when you said it's truly m magical what the artisans have done, the way they've expressed their life stories through, the, through their rugs and the way they have this pride of transferring being a, a technician of something, a weaver, to truly being a creator, right? That's kind of the yeah. difference that you're describing, right? Yes. Um, did, did you imagine, did, did, did your sister imagine the level of, satisfaction and magic that the weavers would experience from it or that you as a family would experience it or was it like did it surpass it in some way <laughs> no actually uh initially when we when we did this uh none of us thought what's gonna come out and you know um and it was just uh hard to know what what we we could come out and, you know, just to explain what happened in one of our, as our early success with this was, um, uh, one of our artisans, her name is Bimla and she, uh, basically, you know, was born in a village, got married into another village and that's what her world was. And mm. she made this stunning manchaha rug, which in which she talked about her childhood and, you know, various inspirations from her life. And, this rug won the very well-known German Design Award in Germany, which is given to you know uh, people in the art industry, um, and and it was the first time and in any India product from India was chosen for this award. And wow. and knowing that uh, my sister Kavi, uh, she flew Bimla to Germany, went with her, and. To receive the award and uh, and it's you know even for me personally it still gives me chills to even imagine what the impact that it had in Bimla's life you know someone who would have never imagined stepping outside her village is now standing 
in front of a global stage in Germany receiving the award. That's incredible. That's really remarkable. I, I'm having the same feelings that I did when I first talked to Asha. It's, um, you know, there's companies that make incredible product, but there's also companies, and they're rare, but like yours, that really... Um, it's beyond the product. It's about the experience. It's a, it reminds me of the way interior designers approach the way they do their business and their career. So I very rarely have met an interior designer that just likes to make a beautiful room. That's great. I made a beautiful room. It's always emotional, and it's always how they impact their clients' lives, and it's always about the bigger picture of all of the feelings, the soul, the the, the artistry of their work that goes in and affects the lives of their clients. And you're doing that too in your way, right? You're actually doing it both ways. You're doing it from your company back to your artisans, but then your rugs are now going into the homes that the designers are specifying and right. having the effect on that homeowner that never gets to see or meet the individual person from the village that creates it, but it's creating a meaningful thing for them in that way as well, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And and, you know, this is a, a change in behavior that we have also seen now with, you know, with consumers, they're being more conscious about what they're buying and, you know, how it impacts um, them, how it impacts people who make it and where it comes from. And especially with COVID, you know, uh, one of the things that have come out and that has accelerated, which we feel, you know, that people are moving towards a very conscious buying behavior and um and with our manchaha you know the it's the life and the emotions as you said you know the emotions of the artisans are captured in the rug and when the artisan and customer you know they live in different parts of the world but you know they are connected through this rug now and they now have a shared mm -hmm. history so this human element you know it's you know it's just not about as you said it's just not about creating just a beautiful room but it's about that emotions and you know that this this element of the human connection which is you know at, at the heart of our manchaha program mm. and it's interesting because we've all had the experience of going to an artisan fair or whatever or walking into a gallery and you happen to meet the artist whether it's you know pottery or sculpture or it's painting or whatever and it does mean more when you make a purchase and you've heard the story of the purchase of the of the art and you've met the artist but yeah. for a company your size to mm -hmm make that a reality is it's remarkable right it's like because here you are it's not this little store on the corner that we can go in and meet the artisan but you are connecting the artisans to us in a way that they're real people to us right and to the for the designer to be able to tell that story to their consumer gives them you know i gotta say it it gives them a leg up in a business sense too right over another designer who's maybe just specifying a rug and and not telling the story of it you're providing the designers with the background and the history and the connection and the emotion to it to, to elevate it to like buying art as opposed to just buying a product uh, yeah absolutely and and you know the uh, you know it's the impact that you know it even goes for the artisans right so before the mm -hmm. pandemic we used to encourage uh, our customers you know who buy into manchaha who buy in our other products to come meet the artisans who who make these drugs and and you know we've we've had so many cases now where we've spoken to these to the artisans and what they say is that you know in when you know they initially learned rug weaving you know which is 15 20 years ago you know a lot of them you know they they used to think they're just you know a labor who is in the manufacturing world and you know they're just manufacturing a product you know just an item um the way it is uh but when people started to visit them you know when we rolled mm -hmm. out the manchaha program as well and the you know the customers around the world you know came to visit them and said them and thanked them for the amazing product they created, you know, and they said that you're just not creating a, any product, a commodity, but you're creating a work of art. The 
artisans realize you know that you know that this is such a dignified work that they do and you know it's still a part of the indian society where it's a social taboo for women to wear a veil um you know when they walk outside their homes because it's considered disrespectful for them to look into eyes of other men and mm. you know with people visiting and telling them you know the, the amount of amazing work that they do they realize that you know that we have we have such a big respect and you know we have such a big self respect we don't need to look down upon and we no longer mm. going to wear a veil so mm. if you see our artisans today you know they they are confident you'll see i mean there's so many pictures that we have you know that none of them uh, you know like to wear veil anymore because you know they, wow. they're not they don't feel inferior anymore they and they know what the wonderful work that they're doing wow i just got goosebumps over that <laughs> that's amazing you know it's like it's it's through the opportunity that you're providing by you know introducing this machaha program and even the way that you run your regular program yeah. respects the artisan and values them i mean i remember being impressed by that yeah. in a, in the first interview with asha this is just another layer of deepening that but um you know you're literally changing the course of their lives Oh yes and and you know with 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 things like this you know it's hard for us to even imagine just as a business okay you know uh sure you know we we want to make sure our customers are happy you know our artisans are happy and they're paid well but this is i feel it's beyond uh it's mm-hmm. beyond it's much beyond that it's you know my father often talks about that um you know we could every business is there you know could make money could be profitable but love is what drives the business and love is what drives our society forward and you know and if we can do both with you know uh with business together you know and that's that's why we come to work every day that's amazing that's amazing yeah i remember falling in love with your father through asha the first time <laughs> <laughs> i was like man i love you that like a great guy your mother as well <laughs> <laughs> thank you so and i want to tell you a little story it's funny because uh this past high point market in uh fall of 2021 i stopped in to jaypur i always yeah. do when i visit to say hello to sasha and the different uh people that you have they're working yeah. and to see the new rugs and so forth and sasha's like louis you have to come over and see these rugs <laughs> you have to come over and see this new thing yeah. and uh you know i was looking and you had three or four rugs on display from the manchaha collection yeah. and it, they really do take your breath away. And to sit there and think about, as you said, to be able to look and see that every little vignette, every little thing that has been woven in, design element that's been woven in, has a personal reason for being there, connected to the artisan that wove it, is is is, is a, a unique experience, I have to say, to see that. And I was looking at how beautiful they were. And the funny little story is, Three, four hours later, I am at the IDS cocktail party. Mm-hmm. So, and I let me just take a step back. Mm-hmm. The day before, I had my Power Talk Friday, which is a one-day business coaching day that I do in, in High Point. Yeah. It's Ash for designers. Yeah. And so I had that all day Friday. Saturday, I'm visiting Jaipur. Saturday, late afternoon, I'm over at the IDS uh, cocktail party. And one of the ladies that was in my Power Talk Friday the day before, her name is Kristen, she comes into the IDS party and she's like, oh my goodness. And we're standing in a little group. She goes, have you ladies been to Jaipur yet today? And I look over at her and she's like, have you been to Jaipur? I'm like, yeah. And she goes, did you see the Manchaha rugs? I'm like, I know, aren't they amazing? She goes, I bought two of them. I was like, what? (laughs) <laughs> so this designer bought two of your rugs from yeah. the show. She's like, absolutely. One is perfect for a project and one is coming home with me. Yes. <laughs> and I have to say, I was so happy for her and just a tiny bit jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, but that's what it was. You just looked at them and you were, you thought to yourself, I want that. <laughs> so it was funny, funny coincidence. I thought that of all the designers in high point, I happened to just spend the entire day before with the one who bought your rugs 
So it's funny. But anyway, so so yes. And so now this young woman goes to Germany and she's on, as you said, a global stage. And she's the first artist in ever to bring home an award, you know, as an Indian artist. And um, I mean, I, 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 my brain goes to crazy places like, what does her mom think? What does her dad think? If, she, if she's married, is her husband like, what are you doing? You're going to Germany. Like, what is happening here? Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it was it. it it took us a little convincing as well, you know, to the, because it's <laughs> right? and it's just not a decision about just about her husband and stuff, right? With, uh, you know, with our Indian family, with our culture, it's the entire family and the society around <laughs> is involved. So The village has to take a vote. Can she go? Yeah. Can she not go? How many days could she be there, right? Yeah. And then, of course, and she doesn't have a passport, right? Because she's never traveled. So <laughs> you create a passport and then you're trying to convince the German government that to give her a visa visa uh, oh. that someone who has just had a new passport you know they have to be, right you know so it, it it it's this it wasn't just as easy just getting her a plane ticket but you know it it and and was she at all trepidatious about going like in other words she probably might have been initially um excited and honored but was there any part of her that was like okay that's great just bring home the award i'm not getting on the plane like i'm not leaving the village <laughs> uh, oh, oh yeah absolutely and my sister kavi she was the one who just kept on pushing <laughs> yeah and like she like yes. you know what you I'm, could I'm, do it i am going to be with you next to you holding your hand throughout the entire oh. four day of our journey so <laughs> yeah yeah. And and that's probably was it was entirely necessary, right? Not like yes. here's your ticket, we'll see you in Frankfurt, you know, oh. like no. <laughs> no, absolutely it's, it's, because it's, she doesn't know English and you know she's never traveled, so you know, you definitely need someone right next to her the entire time. <laughs> And and it's almost as like a rom com movie when I picture it, right? It's like just picturing the unfolding of the few days of the travel and and being in that environment and just almost like watching the world through her eyes. I, you know, Kavi must have been just so thrilled to afford her that experience from this idea that she had, right? Oh yeah, ab absolutely. And you know the the impact it has had, you know the. The artisan Bimla, it's, you know, it. she just can't be more thankful or, you know, she has re literally mm. no words to describe what, you know, what mm. happened. And, you know, when Kavi was back, you know, we just heard many funny stories because <laughs> there were so many things that, you know, Bimla saw for the first time in her life, you know, and oh. Kavi was like, I was tired of, you know, <laughs> explaining what everything meant. <laughs> 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 right. I mean, it is incredible. I mean, what yeah. an incredible experience for both of them. It's uh, so good. And yeah. and when you think about um, this Manchaha program, I, I don't know. I mean, how many how are the artisans selected for this and how many artisans get the opportunity? Is it something where X amount per month or X amount per year are given this opportunity? How does that work, Nitesh? Yeah, um, we we have uh, somewhat kept it open in a way. Um, you know, usually we tr tend to go with artisans, um, you know, who have worked with us f f uh, for a while and, you know, they understand our quality standards and what we strive for and, you know, and, and you know, the artisans whom we feel and, you know, and Kavi has a really good system in terms of identifying some of the good artisans as well because even when they make our rugs, uh, you know, based on different way they make it, you know, it's, you know, we are able to tell how good of a weaver they are, you know, and what, what, what they could do and based on that. And then we do do a small training session now, um, you know, for, for these artisans as well. So uh, just to get them onboarded onto the Manchaha program and, mm. And so at any point, we do have about three to 400 artisans in the Manchaha program at, at any point. Oh. Yeah. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And what is it? So it sounds as, first of all, it sounds like to me, you know, one of the recurring themes, Natasha, on the podcast is that we always say successful businesses are built off the relationships, right? Yeah. And so when you say, when I say, how are the artisans selected? You know, I'm hearing in there, it's that your sister has the relationships with the artist and she understands the work ethic and, you know, all of the different things that go in and to making an impression on someone and from there you know and it's because of her relationships that she actually knows them as opposed to just by a list of names that do make rugs for us in india right so right. she actually has the relationships and that enables her to make the good selections and give the opportunity to the ones that you know are really going to come through for you and to say that there's three or four hundred uh at any given time how how long does it take for an artisan to typically make a manchaha rug? And is it longer? In other words, do you allow a longer period of time than the regular rug program? Because the regular rug program, while it's incredibly intricate and elevated workmanship, it's a sit and execute, not a six, sit and think and sit and design and sit and dream. So how does that work? Yes. No, that that's a great question. And absolutely. Uh, I mean, the, definitely the relationship play a key role. And, you know, we, with and especially with Manchaha, we don't rush the artisan to make make mm -hmm. the rug because, you know, you're, you're trying to micromanage a creative process and we, we don't tend to do that at all. And, and and a rug, a Manchaha rug, you know, usually like a size of an 8 by 10, you know, uh, 8 feet by 10 feet could take anywhere mm -hmm. between uh, three to five months to make and wow. and because the artisan is weaving from you know f you know just from their imagination in a way you know and you know I've visited some of these artisans as well and you know and they were making something and I asked them okay what are you making and then you know she's talking about okay I'm making this I'm adding the tree in my house I went to you know this hike on the mountain and I'm drawing that and then I'm like okay you are you are but where is that design that you're making? You know, because with a rug, you only make putting in one knot at a time. And and, yes. and, a, and an eight by 10 rug can have about a little over half a million knots, oh right? So they just, it's, it's, it, they just translating. It just, you know, it comes, you know, it's from the imagination or, you know, as we like to say, it comes from their heart. You know, it's, they don't mm. draw it on a piece of paper. It just, it just comes out. It's crazy to think of it, right? Like for, for somebody like you and I that could never in a million years do it, right? Yeah. It's like, wait, how do you know when the tree should stop? Like what is that little loop there? Is that the top of the tree? Is that the middle of the tree? <laughs> right? Yeah, and me not being an art person at all, like if you tell me to replicate a design, I'll probably do a horrible job, so. <laughs> right, me too, me too. So so they are working on these rugs three to five months. And then f t by contrast, the regular rug program, when they are given the design, how long does it take for them to make a rug like that? Is it on the shorter end, three months, or is it even possibly shorter? Yeah, no, that's definitely, definitely much shorter. Uh, it does take about I would say 30 to 40 percent less time because, you know, they yeah. have the design right in front of them and they just have to just replicate what they're seeing. So it's mm -hmm. it moves mm -hmm. it, it weaves significantly faster. So, yes. Yes. Yeah. And and are there, um, you know, are there other artisans that have like stories like Bimla that are just so unique and different that surprise you or surprise your sisters or anything like that? Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, there was uh, this one couple, um, uh, Bhagchand and Parvati, um, and Bhagchand, that's the name of the husband, and um, Parvati, uh, his wife. And they um, they had been making rugs for us for, uh, for a long time, and we gave them the opportunity to make their own manchaha rug. And the husband was weaving patterns of different objects and his wife sitting next to him she was weaving patterns and colors from her different sarees which is sari is a traditional attire that women in india wear and she was weaving that pattern and a couple of weeks into that you know they looked at the rug and 
they notice that it's looking completely different. It's the same rug, but it's looking completely <laughs> different from the two Is sides. Is he on one end and she's at the other end? Yes, yeah. So because they're sitting <laughs> side by side, right? So they're we- weaving from the ends, right? And then coming in. So, so, so they get into this argument and they both try to, you know, say that they are weaving the better design and, you know, just as a regular couple, they can't come to a conclusion. So... Um, they call actually they call upon their neighbors to decide okay who is doing a better job <laughs> and the uh, neighbors um, you know they they agree that the wife is doing a better job so you know being the good husband he is um, gives up and you know starts following the pattern from from the point and and you know this you know few months later that rug, ends up winning the European Design Award. Which, oh my goodness. Which again, it's the first time, uh, you know, a product from India won <laughs> that award. So, and... Oh my goodness. But they did agree to do the wife's vision for the rug. Yes, they did. And oh. and, and here's the thing, right? When, when the couple was told that their rug won this award, uh, you know, and that it's... Wait, I'm going to tell you what happened. He said, it's a good thing we, we went your way. I said to go that way, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> and, no, but he, here's the thing he says that, you know, you know, he like when my neighbors agreed that she was doing the better part and he says this exact words is, that day I gave up my ego and started following her design. This rug is the Aww. result of the genius she is. Aww. That's so amazing. That's so amazing. I love that. Oh, my goodness. It's a good thing you didn't commission me and the Vin Man to do a rug. I can just tell you that, Natash, because we would have fought to the death. <laughs> We'd have been like, my way, my way, my way. And we finally would have said, you know what? The rug is meant to be both sides, and it would have been a hot mess. <laughs> but that's awesome, yeah. because that's also... You know, very unlike the culture to to do that, to even acquiesce or then to even forget acquiesce, but then to give the credit and to say something so bold. Am I yes. right about that? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. This is <laughs> something, um, you know, that I often don't find, especially in that part of of of, uh, of, of India is, you know, um, it's the women are not given that much credit and, you know, for us to see the changes that, you know, that uh, the couples feel in their own lives and, you know, with, you know, the respect level that women feel that they have, you know, it's, uh, it's incredible. And, you know, th- and, you know, now the way they're bringing up their children, you know, just, you know, it, it's coming out from so much more confidence. So, mm. you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it just gives us goosebumps each day when we yes. share these stories and we hear uh, new ones that come up every day. Do you ever sit and contemplate how this started with your father and your mother having a vision for, what do you have, four sisters in you? So it's uh, three sisters and my brother, so five of us. Okay, okay, I thought, I remembered it was five, so it's three sisters and the two brothers. Yeah. But as I recall the conversation from Asha, it was you know, I think your father and maybe your mother as well, but she certainly didn't argue with it, right? That said, I want a different life for my daughters. They knew you too would be fine because, you know, men rule the world and they knew you would be fine. But they needed to move, if I recall properly, like a thousand miles away so that your, your sisters would be able to grow up and be... Uh, whatever they wanted to be. And when I think now, the ripple effect of that, I mean, what your mother and father's decision did, it not only affected your family, but you are now rippling through the f- lives and generations of so many of the of your 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 kindred in India. It's crazy. I mean, do you th- contemplate the, the enormity of that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it 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 is something that you know we as a family we we feel proud of you know um and especially with the decisions that you know that my parents took and you know my father always says that he never differentiates between um a boy child and a girl child and especially mm-hmm. with the backgrounds that we come from you know um you know me being a boy saying that you know they the boys are often spoiled because they're the boys of the family and 
and you know and especially with the community that we belong to for women to be in a leadership role it's something unheard of and you know like mm. if you see my sister asha archana here in the us you know they 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 lead they lead the company here in the us and then kavi in india she you know is the lead on the design side you know so you know for women to be on a leadership role you know it's uh, it's you know for for our culture it's it's a very unique and and you know my father just between just in the family he you know as growing up you know he never differentiated okay that you are the boy of the house or you are the girl of the house you know all of us were mm-hmm. treated equally all of us were given the treat equal uh, opportunities you know and equal share of love i would say Mm, yeah. But it, it's it the thing is what I'm really it's settling on me is that that's a it, that's so wonderful that he did that within your nuclear family. But because your parents had such a vision for that, the equality of your sisters within the family, the company that you that he started and you guys now run and 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 do you are continuing that on. I mean, that woman would have never had her husband say something like that about her publicly, let alone on a global stage, unless your mother and father took the first step how many, you know, decades ago, right? Oh, yeah, definitely, it's absolutely. Crazy. And yeah, and it's crazy. And, you know, Asha may have mentioned this is, you know, that, you know, that back in the day when, you know, my father started, the business uh, uh you know got into the rug weaving you know the the weavers at that point you know they were referred to as the untouchable class and mm. my father in his mind you know he always had this conflict in his mind is you know they have the same same eyes the same hands the same body type as i do how are they different you know how can someone be different from just by just by their last names or you know just by which section of the society they belong to they they are creative people and you know they've just never given the dignity the love and the respect they deserve um you know and you know the moment he started doing that you know so it's just not about you know just him not differentiating between the kids but also he just never differentiated in terms of okay if he's talking to a ceo of a really large company versus if he's talking to um you know someone you know in a village who is you know um who is just you know he treats everyone like a human being and the way they are and how uh, one human should communicate with another one mm I I I mean it's, it's it's something else it really is. One day I I said this to Asha, I would love to meet your mom and dad. I'm like ah! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> your whole family. <laughs> I just um it's it's inspiring and it makes you sit and think, am I being a good global citizen? Am I doing something that is impacting other people's lives? Am I doing enough? Like I just I don't know how you listen to this and not to kind of self reflect and say okay get busy <laughs> like what yes. are you doing <laughs> you know so uh it's really it's 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 so incredible and i just admire you know all of you so much for what you do and i i want to turn this now to you know the business of jaipur living right and what you have to offer in tier designers in the rug program of course in asha's episode like i mentioned 526 we went through a lot of it but talk about why we we touched on it a tiny bit but let's let's talk about it why do you think that i guess share with us some things that a designer could share an impact beyond maybe you know to explain to their clients about investing in a manchaha rug so we have the human element we have the story but is there something that we should know about the quality of the rug or the availability of the rug or where we find the rug and to go into that a little bit from the practical side for the designers listening uh, yes so you know th- firstly this manchaha rug you know this one rug that's made ever right because it's very very hard to re- replicate what the artisan they create so it's so it's truly one of a kind you know to mm. to begin with and 
and these rugs are you know are, are all hand knotted you know the construction is hand knotted which is a really high quality construction by itself and you know they the materials and everything that that been used it's part of you know our our all the high quality rugs that we make so everything that goes in into the into the rugs itself so they you know these rugs you know are meant to last for for generations to come Mm. Um, and um, so that's that's the first thing so you know with just just not being they're just high quality you know to begin with and then when we look at the the design itself um, you know they they look different they they are such so rich in terms of you know each of the element and you know because each of the element within that truck it's so carefully crafted by the artisans you know and each of them you know talk about a part of their story and about their life and it becomes such a big conversation piece uh, for mm. the you know the family who's owning a manchaha rug you know it you know when they have and you know something that they can feel proud about about that you know the impact and you know they've given the the artisan an opportunity to express you know their life into this rug so you know and just to see that in your home every day and to walk by it and you know talk about that it you know that's that i would say is you know a big big thing that i feel the designers could share with their with their customers i agree and i feel like um is there one other element of it that makes sense is the fact that you are taking all of what you mentioned in the beginning thousands of pounds of yarn product that's left over from other rugs and instead of yeah. just throwing them in a landfill right they're now yeah. going back into new rugs so that's also i would think a, a great selling point too because so many consumers now are really asking for and requesting of interior designers sustainable products so that sort of fits that bill too oh, right yeah. oh yeah yes there's, mm. I mean that that's a big piece, right? It's I mean it's made from you know these surplus yarns, and you know they're you know they're, it avoids anything to go go waste, and you know it's a big, a huge sustainability uh, side to this as well. Mm. So yeah. good, so good, and I remember Asha telling us in the first episode that Jaipur Living, your network of artisans is more than 40,000 artisans in over 600 villages in India. Mm -hmm. And that a hallmark of Jaipur rugs is providing a sustainable wage that is above the industry average. And you also give access to healthcare and education and social development opportunities. So we're talking about these very heartfelt opportunities that, you know, these artisans have got, have gotten by being able to put their heart and soul and create in a rug, but you're also really changing the way their actual life is on the ground from a practical standpoint as well. Right, Nitesh? Yes. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, with, with the artisans, you know, because we, the way we work is we don't use middlemen, you know, it's our own team, you know, our, our own employees uh, meeting with these mm -hmm. artisans, you know, training them, you know, and we have our own logistics that drop off the material at their homes and pick up the rugs back because of course the rugs can be pretty heavy. So, um, so with that support system and everything that comes to them, you know, we are directly able to control the experience the artisans have, you know, rather than going through a third party. Um, so, and, you know, if, you know, and we have direct access to their, the voices of the artisans. So, and, you know, as a family, we, whenever, you know, especially let's say if I were to visit in India, you know, we often, we quite a bit travel, to meet with the artisans as well, you know, just to be, you know, ensure, you know, that they, they are uh, being treated the way they should be. Mm. You know what I heard in there? I, I wouldn't have, I don't know that I would have gotten it if I just read it, but when you said it and you said, because you don't have middlemen, yep. you're able to ensure 
what's happening with the artisan, right? You're yeah. able to know who they are, that they're being treated well, they're being pay paid fair wages, that when you go there, they know you, you know them. And I guess what you're describing is in whatever other industry, when you have a company and you hire a, another person in the middle, whether it's a huge company or a person, to then go make those contracts, you don't really know what happens on that end is what you're saying. You don't know how those people are treated on the other end of that. But you, because you don't sub that out, that portion of that um, pipeline out, you know how the artisans are, are, are being treated. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. So good. So good. And so this, this Manchaha collection, what, what it's, it's, it came out in the fall of 2021. Yeah. It, can I see it on the website now? If a designer is listening, are there, I mean, how, I guess what I'm saying is, did you launch it when you had more than the, the, the two that the, my friend bought? <laughs> like, <laughs> are there more there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Since they take a long time to make. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We, 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 we have more. And again, you know, it, it is a very limited, you know, collection, you know, they're not, do many of those also out there but you know uh, but we are making more as as and we are getting them on our website so we are getting into a quarterly launch schedule on our website um, mm. so outside of high point you know the, the designers can definitely see these rugs online and you know and you know it's just one of them out there so if you like something i would say grab mm. it that's it you can't wait <laughs> you yes. can't wait because there won't be another one yeah <laughs> It's 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 so it's so amazing. I'm just so impressed as I was the first time in the conversation with Asha. Uh, what you guys do at J Poor Living is just incredible. I, I keep using the same silly, you know, words over and over again because I, I'm a little overwhelmed by it. I really am. I just um, when I think about how much care and thought goes into the way you run your company and of course it like you said it all stems from your father and treating pe people with dignity and respect and care and you know understanding that love has a place in business and it's uh incredible what you do Natesh I really congratulate you guys and I'm honored that you know you you let me help you bring your story out to the designers I have to say oh, th thank you Luan. thank you for the opportunity and and the humble words it's definitely definitely means a lot to us I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for joining me today, Natesh. Thank you, Luen. Thank you for having me here. All right. <laughs> so it's pretty clear how impressed and inspired I am by J Poor Living. I mean, you can tell because I'm constantly tongue tied. And I feel like all I keep saying is that's amazing. That's incredible. Because, well, aren't they? Do you too feel the absolute top-down commitment to the core values and principles? You know, they've ingrained them in every facet of what they do. It's not just me, right? You get it too, right? I mean, from the journey that the parents took to give their family, their daughters, a better life, to the way they conduct their business with thoughtfulness, dedication, humanity, and generosity. You know this show is about business. It's about profits. And that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But when I hear stories of people like this family, this J Poor Living family, and this Manchaha initiative that they've created, it highlights how you can build a profitable business and be a positive difference in the world. They go hand in hand. They're not exclusive of each other, right? The ethics and the dignity, dignity behind our businesses are important. The values our businesses have are reflected in everything we do. For Jay Poor, it's more than making money. It's more than being profitable. They are creating a legacy of equality, of commitment, of strength, and empowerment. Does it get you to thinking about what more you might do? Do you have it in your heart to do a greater good? Maybe spend some time considering in what ways you could work and bring this desire into your business the way they have. Remember, the Manchaha Initiative started as a way to honor their commitment to sustainability. This is one of their core values. And they looked around, there were thousands of pounds of yarn being thrown away and they didn't want it to go to waste. So they went to their weavers and said, make anything, any design you want. And then the designs came from the heart. So cool, isn't it? 
listening to the stories that Nitesh told of the lives that have been impacted and how the weavers transformed from technicians to artists. It's impossible not to feel moved. I mean, I don't think you're like breathing if you're not moved by this, right? And the ripple effect of that single decision that Asha and Natasha's parents made, a single decision based on a desire, a conviction that they wanted to ensure against the, st the current status quo, right? To give their children the best life possible, not just the best life possible in a particular location. You have to listen to the first episode to hear that story. This decision has resulted in a best life possible for their family, but for hundreds of thousands of their country men and women as well. And now this family is using this opportunity. S the siblings, Natesh and Asha and their siblings are taking that same opportunity that was given to them by their parents and they're paying it forward right? They're paying it forward and they're using it to better the lives of the artisans that make their company run. I cannot wait to see the Manchaha collection again at High Point next month, right? Definitely do not miss the chance to see these rugs in person. I am telling you, you are going to be blown away. And if you have clients who are concerned about the ethics behind the pieces that they use in their home or are interested in the stories about the pieces that go into their home, then Jaipur should be on the top of your go-to sourcing list, right? The rugs are high quality, made to last for generations, and they are made from the heart. All right. My great thanks to Jaipur Living. Jaipur has been a friend and a supporter of this podcast for several years now. And it is important to me that you understand that that should be important to you too. The sponsors of the show are just like your extended team of contractors, trades, and professional colleagues who enable you to do the work that you do. It's the same here. The sponsors are a huge reason that I'm able to do the show to make it my day job to bring the show to you. So I encourage you to support our sponsors. Go to jpoorliving.com forward slash Luann to learn more about the Manchaha collection and how to open your trade account today. Thanks tons for listening. Decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one -on -one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.